So, welcome to the video. As you can see, I'm up here in the top corner. That is Trappy. You probably know him if you're a Team Black Sheep pilot, or if you're not, this is Trappy. So, Trappy is the man behind Team Black Sheep, and the reason for the video today is I want to talk to him about something that I've been lucky enough to have for a couple of weeks and be playing around with uh, that's just come out. This is the TBS Tracer. Now, there are a lot of radios that have come out over the past uh, month or two. Uh, Laura based systems, things like the ones from Flysky and things like the Ghost from Immersion RC, and they're using Laura technology. Now, this one doesn't look like it is. Now, Laura technology, you think is it something that's brand new because we've only really heard about it in the past six weeks since Flysky brought out their new module. But actually, Crossfire has been using Laura since it started. So for you guys, Laura is not new. However, you've decided not to go Laura with this. So can you first of all just explain what this is, why you brought it out, and why it isn't Laura? Because you know Laura better than anybody. Yeah, I mean, we already have a Laura system, right? So it doesn't make sense to just um, release the same thing on a different frequency. Um, so we wanted to. Um, make a system that highlights different advantages over um, LoRa. And I mean, LoRa is kind of, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very um, niche and, and kind of, I wouldn't say dated, but it's, it's definitely an aging protocol um, that is kind of um, slow in its transmission, which has um, benefits and obviously downsides. Um, in terms of the benefits, obviously, LoRa has um, insane um, signal robustness um, just because it is um, kind of long and slow. So if you imagine a whale talking underwater, um, they'll, they'll basically slow down their, their communication into, like, um, into a very low frequency, um, and that means that it travels a lot further. And to translate that into RF um, theory, it basically means that they're, um, the same signal is transmitted multiple times and, and there's some kind of redundancy built into the system. Um, at the cost, obviously, of latency, of refresh rate, um, of bandwidth, and all of these things. So that's why we decided for a 2.4 system to really make something that's incredibly fast um, and basically comparing the, the whale analogy I've made before versus a machine gun <laughs> right. um, um, <laughs> in, in, on, on our new system, right? I can see so it's, it's, going it's, be lot, one, it's going to be one of those chats today, isn't it? We've already had a whale and a machine gun analogy. Okay, but I'm, 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 I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so the, so the so, LoRa system, just, just, to, just to check my understanding of it, the reason that you use LoRa in Crossfire is because the way that Crossfire works is you have multiple radio profiles. So as you fly further away, it actually uh, drops uh, down the speed and preserves the link. So, so when you're really far away, it's, it's, it's the whale, right? But in Crossfire, when you're really close in, it kind of goes into machine gun mode. And there's actually other mode. I don't know, guppy, you know, dolphin. Yeah, there's yeah. some other modes in between, right? <laughs> but but that's the way it works. Um but yeah. but but with this, you've kind of gone no, we just so is this is this machine gun all the time? Is that what we're saying? Yes. So the the LoRa system, actually the Crossfire is the only system that I don't know of that does the throttling on the RC. Okay. Um, those of you that are familiar with the DJI HD system, they do something similar with the video where they basically throttle um, the, bit the bandwidth yeah. uh, or the bit rate yeah, uh, according to the distance. And, and the, the lower your bit rate, the further you go. Again, going back to the, to the whale analogy. <laughs> um, so for, for the tracer, we actually don't necessarily need that. So the design requirements that we had was that it, it, it can outperform or um, yeah, outperform your your current um, five point eight video link, whether it be digital or analog. Okay, so because I was quite surprised when I saw this, because I think lots of pilots use Crossfire because of the really low latency. I mean, if you go to a quad racing event, right, seventy eighty percent of all the pilots stood on the on the flight line have got the immortal T antenna on it, right? So, yeah. so when you came out with this, I was I was really um, kind of surprised. One because you kept it really quiet. I'm looking yeah. at you, um, but but secondly, it it actually looks, feels, and behaves as a user 
like a crossfire system. In terms of how it works, because I, I, I mean, let me just show you. I, I've got, you were very kind enough to send me two test units. This is the smaller one on the back of my x Lite, And then I've got the full-size one. And the full-size one, you know what? If you, if you, if you, if you didn't look very closely at the at the logo, that just looks like a crossfire radio, but the antennas may be slightly different. Can you talk a little bit about yeah. about what you've done? Because for me, playing around with it, this just feels like crossfire on two point four. Yeah, and especially if you have a demo unit, there's actually still like crossfire leftovers in the code. <laughs> um, so you'll have some settings that actually don't do anything, but um, that are um, inherited, let's say, from from the crossfire, and yeah. they'll be removed by the time that the system is out. Right. Um, we're okay. recording this before before the launch. So, um, yeah, uh, the the way that or what we have done is we've taken the engine, basically the 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 things like the protocol, the telemetry, um, the radio support, um, all of these things, um, and separated them from the RF circuitry. So it's basically the smart of the system and what everybody's used to using. That's one part of the code, and we call that the Crossfire engine. And then we, on top of that, we have put um, a new RF technology um, that we're calling the Tracer. So the two systems are not compatible. You cannot bind a Crossfire receiver to a Tracer transmitter, but they will act and feel and behave um, pretty much identical. Same for the receivers. They're the same size. They're the same form factor. Um, so uh, any of the mounting boards, they're cross-compatible. Um, and, and users won't even know the difference between the two, um, apart from, as you said, the antennas. Because let's talk about the antennas. I'll insert an image of the receiver here. Uh, the receiver actually has diversity on it, and it has yeah. two little baby antennas. But the big difference here is the antenna size. And this is something that I wasn't expecting. But of course, it, because it, the, the, the antenna length is a, is a function of the wave length, um, they, the, the way, these are tiny. Um, these would be much easier to locate vertically on something like a quadcopter, whereas with the Crossfire system, you always have to end up putting them horizontally, which is the only way they fit. Has anyone been kind of, I guess people have been racing with this in part of the testing. How, how's all that gone? Because it, it still feels pretty quick. Yeah, we, we've actually had many complaints from our test pilots because they couldn't find any issues. So um, it, it, they just took it, uh, installed it, found it, and it, it, it just worked um, because of because the, of the diversity. So you have two antennas mm -hmm. on on the receiver. I don't know if, if people can see the the. There's two antennas. These are not the antennas that will ship. No, it. no. I, I've I've got the ones that look like the black T's. Yes, exactly. Um, so the the advantage of having diversity is that you can um, mount it much easier on a quad to always have um, reception so that your um, GoPro or your battery or your frame doesn't block out the signal. Plus, you obviously, as you just um, hinted, you have the polarization diversity, um, so that no matter which attitude that, that your drone is at, it will always have the ideal signal. So, so for me, I, I know when I plugged it in, I was expecting OpenTX to not be happy with it and download a special TBS, you know, OpenTX nightly download and do all that shenanigans, and I didn't. I just plugged the module in, went into the Lua script, the Crossfire Lua script. Are you going to have to rename that now? Or, 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 <laughs> no, because it runs the Crossfire engine, right? Oh, so okay, right. Like that, the, that's the, how you get around that. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I went into the Crossfire Lua script, and it just populated as normal. The CRSF was available, and I literally just, without, I kind of didn't read the manual um, that you sent. So I, I just kind of um, did it as though I do with Crossfire, and it just, worked so if you're a crossfire pilot um this is like you say this is kind of plug and play and, and i i genuinely haven't had any issues with it either it's just kind of worked um even though i'm obviously not on the latest code yet because you just said there's a couple of things that i can see yeah. that probably won't be there when it's released let's talk about the differences between this and crossfire then why would somebody buy this over the crossfire 868 915 20 kilometers plus or you know close in super fast racing why bring out a radio that's basically the same crossfire engine but a different frequency so i mean existing crossfire pilots won't have many reasons to change so the the device wasn't made to um, ask you to spend more money it, it was it was supposed to be an, an, an additional i mean obviously i won't <laughs> I won't you won't you won't stop like people buying it yeah no I, <laughs> yeah, right. 
I will make very little effort to stop people from spending money. But um, the cr crossfire is basically more versatile and um, uh, it has more range. Uh, but that's natural because it, it just has a lower Love frequency. It. There's never going to be a 2.4 system that outperforms crossfire just based on pure physics alone. So the crossfire has all this throttling built in. Um, it has the, the improved signal stability um, of LoRa versus the, the 2.4 system that we brought out is more for the racing pilot. So anybody who's been having issues with crossfire at big events, um, 2.4 obviously gives you more bandwidth, so that means more pilots can race at the same time. Um, and it is much faster. So the, the, we only have one mode, one RF mode or mm -hmm. whatever you call it, um, and that comes with telemetry, with um, listen before talk, that's for the legal... Um, compliance. Um, so all of that is built in and it does 250 hertz at three milliseconds latency. So that means you have a four millisecond refresh rate and a three millisecond latency. Right. That's faster than Crossfire though, right? Um, that's about twice the speed of Crossfire on 150 hertz mode. Oh, okay. So th in, terms of, in terms of latency and in terms right. of the refresh rate, it's only about 40% faster. But, so if you're a racer... Oh. And you're only racing, you know, and you're only flying out 400 meters or whatever as part of a track. Uh, Tracer will give you a lower latency than Crossfire. Yes. So and this is on right. the most basic code um, that has not been optimized yet. Um, technically, the latency can be probably as low as a millisecond and a half. So another 50% um, improvement over what you currently have. That's and, and as people who are familiar with Crossfire, when we shipped it out the first time, it only had one RF mode, 50 hertz. Mm -hmm. um, we, we tend to um, release hardware, and then um, we have about every two to three weeks, we have a new beta software that the customers can try out. And we've been, we've been keeping that going for six or seven years now, so we don't plan on changing that. Um, so the, the improvements will gradually flow um, out on uh, in, in terms of tracers. So you'll, you will be able to get lower latency. However, in terms of the refresh rate, we plan not to increase that just for legal requirements. Okay. All right. So, so let's talk a little bit about some of the legal stuff because you mentioned the L word. So in terms of range, let's talk about that first of all. Um, obviously, I'm in the UK, so flying beyond line of sight is something I can't. But however, testing it to two line of edge of line of sight, it's just kind of worked. Have you guys uh, been anywhere where you've been able to push it? What's the power output of this and how far have you had it out? In the UK, you'll have 100 milliwatts. Um, in the US, you'll have 500 milliwatts. Um, and as people who are familiar with our products, you can also unlock them if you have a hand license. And in that case, it will go up to one watt. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be available at the start, but it's going to, the, the hardware capability is there. Okay. So very, very similar to most of the stuff that you bring out. You tend to over engineer stuff and keep it quiet. Um, yeah. and then, and then you find out there's a Wi Fi antenna in it. <laughs> like, I'm no, yeah. uh, okay. So, so with, with that kind of, uh, power, um, obviously, it's, let, let's let's assume we're talking about 100 milliwatts, right? Because I'm going to be selfish here for a moment. If I wanted yeah. to push it to to the edge with my on on again current caveat 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 current firmware versions and yada yada, um, roughly what kind of range could I expect to get from the tracer? About 15 kilometers or 10 miles at 100 milliwatts. Okay, that's significantly more. Trappy than uh, than the you know my FR Sky stuff after about one and a half kilometers I'm starting to sweat. So yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a completely new um, technology, right? Um, right? Obviously, it's going to go further than pretty much. I mean, we wouldn't be doing our jobs properly <laughs> if, it, if it went less far. Right. <laughs> so um, so it, okay, it does go significantly further, and with one with one watt, we we have personally taken it out to fifty kilometers. But that was with the prototype receivers, um, and the receivers that I have here go thirty percent further. So right. I, I know it's not it, it's not good um, marketing okay. to, uh, so, but so, it's going to be like 70, 80 kilometers possible 
Uh, Gee, but, okay. So so basically, my one and a half kilometers. If if I if I could do that on free sky, uh, the, and 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 that's the part where things get squeaky. If I was doing it on something like the tracer, I would still should be in very happy um, situation. I should be because because I because again, when you and I talked about crossfire a long time ago, a uh, lots of people used to talk about the crossfire as a long range system. And I remember us talking. You were saying, no, no, no. It's it's a you you, oh, you can absolutely do long range with it, but it's also low latency. And those are the two yeah. camps that use it. I'm guessing that actually for some pilots that maybe haven't invested in Crossfire but want to use 2.4, this would still give you reasonable reach in terms of distance flying, but also potentially lower latencies as well. So, okay, that helps me understand. Have I, have I kind of summarized that right or have I just completely yeah, yeah. right? Okay. Absolutely, yeah. How does this play with other radio systems then? Say I'm at, say I am at the field and there's like a free sky and a fly sky and God forbid spectrum and all you know everyone's flying the quads around right and I turn this on. Uh, what, have you done any testing around that? I'm not going to you know lose any friends over this, am I? <laughs> no, no. I mean we've done plenty of testing with the pilots. This has actually been used at events. Um, I don't know. Uh, some I, there might be some spy shots out by the time this is released, but right. um, we do ask the test pilots. <laughs> <laughs> to, we, we just asked them to paint the, these flaps here. We, we asked them to paint them in black. <laughs> uh, so I, I I'm going to be good, good right? Point. I am actually genuinely not going to post. This is the only video that I'm doing, and I'm desperate to talk <laughs> about them. So please, can we just bring this flipping stuff out? Because um, yeah. every I, I keep telling people I've got this amazing radio system I want to talk to you about. And they go, what is it? I say, I can't say yet. And I've been saying that for four weeks. <laughs> right. Uh, so 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 you've been flying at a racing events, and it's been okay. Is is the answer? Yeah, it, it it actually uses less bandwidth than the other system, just because it's that much faster. So um, the the potential for interference is actually lower than with a comparable um, two point four system like the Free Sky or your um, Spectrum. Fantastic. Okay, that. Trappy, thank you so much for the time today and, and kind of talking me through this. That's really helped me get my head around it. Um, so I think for, personally, I think there's going to be a lot of pilots out there that this is going to be a really cute solution for. And uh, if no, for no other reason than the antennas are so small on the receiver, it just means that you can put them anywhere. And if you're building a long range quad or an Explorer or something like that, trying to fit the Immortal T antenna somewhere on it so it doesn't get cut off or, or ripped off in a crash. Um, those little, little t what, baby immortal t I don't know what you call them yet. But, um, mini mortals. <laughs> mini immortals. Um, yeah. Are, 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 are kind of really good. Um, is there anything else that you kind of want to mention before we finish the call? But uh, for me, I, I, that, I think that's been helpful and a good introduction to what the system is for anyone that's new that hasn't seen it before. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the, the basic rule, if you want to decide, is if you want a more versatile and long-range system, you're going to still stick with the Crossfire, you're going to get the Crossfire. And if you are a quads-only guy, um, then the Tracer is a serious um, candidate to look at, especially if you're doing um, high-performance racing. I would add to that. I'm um, I'm probably going to put it in a wing. My next wing build on the on the series, I'm probably going to put it in a wing, just because those antennas can almost be laid against the foam on the outside. Um, and, oh yeah. Yeah, and because the problem that I have, and those that watch the the, the I, you know, when I put Crossfire in my wings. I always mount the antenna vertically, and I'm always worried that you know I'm going to snap the bottom half it. of it off. Um, so, uh, so for me, you know, this—if you're a wing guy, actually—I also think this could this could be a very cute way of doing it. So, th thanks very much for your time, Trappy. Appreciate that, yeah. and um, yeah, Thank good you. luck with the launch. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to Author Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.